Hi guys, so I'm back with yet another video. I know this is one video that I've been telling people that I'm going to do on my channel, but I haven't really had the time to actually do on my channel. So I really wanted us to have a look at basic suturing technique. Uh, right off the bat, I have to say that I am not a surgeon. This is only but a practical example to actually help you guys with learning the uh, suturing technique. So, and for practice, it's just simply, just a simple basic demonstration. So with me here are the basics that you actually need. Of course, you need your patient right now. This is our patient here. As you can see, they have a wound over there that needs to be repaired. Of course, you're not going to be poking your finger into your patient's wound like this. You're going to uh, want to repair it in a, in a fashion. I'll explain how we're going to repair this wound very shortly. You need your suturing material, which is this over here. I have one that is already open, so it looks something like this. This is, uh, it looks something like this. So as you can see here, you have uh, your needle and the thread that is there. So this looks like it's a monofilament type of suture. So we also need our sterile gloves because remember that this is a sterile procedure. I will explain how exactly you're going to be using the sterile gloves, how you should open them. Because remember this, you want it to be as sterile as, as, sterile as possible. We have our tray over here, which will have our instruments. These already come pre-packed except for the iodine solution and the normacillin that you're going to be pouring in a, a very septic, uh, aseptic technique, really. So you also have our gauze over there, and uh, this is going to be used to, of course, clean the wound. We use, we're using a foam in this case because we don't really have the gauze and we're rather improvising. And don't ask me why my iodine is not looking so dark. It's just improvisation. Here we have our instruments. We have our forceps over there. You, you need two types of forceps, but unfortunately the one that we have here is the non-toothed um, dissecting forceps. The toothed one will have two pointed teeth at the end there. You call that as a toothed dissecting forceps, but we don't have that currently. We have our scissors over there. Don't come flooding my comment and say, this is not the right scissors to cut stitches because it's what I have and what I'm working with. Here we have our needle holder over here. We have our needle holder that's going to be holding our suture. So you need to actually have this needle holder. Very important, even how you're going to be handling it is actually very important. The technique that you're going to be using, I will discuss that very shortly. Okay, so let's jump right into how we're going to be opening the gloves in a sterile fashion. Remember, all this should be a sterile procedure. So as you can see on the gloves here, it's written that you're supposed to peel this downwards. So when you're opening it, make sure that you're not touching the inside contents of your gloves. And the way you're going to be opening it is you're going to peel it open like that. You're peeling it open. So with hold, holding it both hands and you're pulling with both hands and you're peeling it open. Never should you touch the contents of the inside because this is a sterile procedure. So if this was a sterile field and everything here was sterile, you're going to dump it like that. If you're in theater and you're going to dump it like that, and then you have this being entirely sterile and you dispose of the, the packaging on the other side. So this is actually sterile. I've opened it in a sterile manner. Of course, I'm assuming that I have washed my hands in a surgical manner and my hands are clean. Now, once now you're putting them on, there's a way in which you actually put them on. So as you can see, you're going to open, open the pack like that. You open the pack, you make sure that you're not touching the gloves on the inside like that. You're opening the pack in a sterile fashion. So as you can see, the way they fold the gloves on the inside, the way they're folding the gloves is that the part that's going to be in contact with your skin really is the one that you're going to be touching. So I'm going to be using a technique like a shovel to actually lift them up like that. So as you can see, I'm lifting them up like that such that I'm ensuring that I'm not touching the outside. And the only part that I'm touching is the part that's going to be in contact with my skin. That's the part that I'm touching. And that's how I'm putting them on. As you can see, I'm not touching the outside part of the glove. That's how I'm putting my glove on. This hand now is sterile, so I can pretty much um, hold this other glove here because this glove here is sterile and I've put it on in a sterile fashion. So again, I'll show you the technique. Suppose this, I want to first glove this hand, which is maybe like my, my dominant hand. So like a, like a shovel and putting it on like that. Then assuming that this glove doesn't, this hand doesn't have a glove, I'm pulling it in that fashion. Okay, pulling it over my um, fingers over there. Okay, and then 
you dress up like that. So that's how you're going to be wearing your gloves in a sterile fashion. And you make sure that this is a sterile fashion. So you can dispose of this elsewhere. Now, assuming that you haven't yet opened your, assuming that you haven't yet opened your suture, um, assuming that you haven't yet worn your gloves, I don't know why I wore my gloves before opening my suture. So don't open this. So if, you, if I open this and go ahead and open this, minus um, rather with my gloves, it means I've contaminated these gloves. I've contaminated the outside. So it means I have to wear a fresh pair of gloves. So again, the way you open this is similar to the way we are opening the gloves. So you're going to be peeling it open. So you peel it open and then you drop the content of the suture into your um, uh, tray over there and you dispose of that. So this entire packet now is going to be sterile. And we have now this scenario where now we have our instruments over there that are in this sterile field. And of course we have our uh, suture that's over there. So now you can open the suture and you can hold it since now your hands are sterile, you can hold it and you can open it. And as you can see, the needle there is quite big. So when you open it, you stretch it out, you stretch it out so that you make sure that it's nice and straightened out. So as you can see your needle over here, your needle over here is going to be having a curve. Usually you want to place your needle holder at this particular point here because you want to be making it such that it's hitting the skin at 90 degrees and going into the skin at 90 degrees. That's why you want to place your needle holder somewhere there. Uh, not really at the center, but closer to this other side so that you can, when you're making that swinging motion with your wrist, you're actually getting into the skin in that fashion. So I've opened up our suture. We have worn our gloves and let me just get this out of the uh, surgical field and we have everything ready now. So the first thing that we're going to do is of course, we want to clean our wound over there. If you have an assistant, you can actually ask your assistant to do this to wear your sterile gloves and clean it. You can first start off by irrigating the wound over there. You're going to irrigate it with um, whatever it is that you want to irrigate, whether it's your normal cell line or whatever it is that you're going to be using you can actually irrigate your, your wound over there. Once it has been irrigated, you're going to take your, of course, your swab like that and dip it inside there. And then you're going to clean the wound and make sure that you're cleaning away from the wound and you're not cleaning over the wound. So you're cleaning away from the wound. We don't want to see this because you are retracing everything that is there. We don't want to see this because you're retracing, you're taking the bacteria that is there, putting it there. So you want to be cleaning away from the margins of the wound. So you swab once, you dispose. Take another one, swab again, dispose. Take another one, swab again. So you do it with the normal cell line, like this. Again, on the other side, on the other side, on the other side, on the other side, like that. Then of course, you get another swab. You dip it in your iodine, swab that side, swab that side, swab that side, swab that side, swab that side. Ensure that now your wound is completely clean. Now, when you're coming towards the wound and you are repairing the wound, remember you have a wound and we are going to be using what is known as the rule of 50s. So we have a wound that is this length here. And if you want to close up this wound, the first suture that you must place should be the one that is halfway. So halfway of the wound is somewhere here because that's going to be halfway of the wound of this distance over here. So you're going to place your suture there to divide this wound into two halves. Then you have two halves there. You place another suture here, you place another suture here. So this wound would need one, two, about three sutures for you to actually completely close this particular wound. So I've cleaned this area. We now get our uh, needle holder. Now the way you hold this is there are different techniques that uh, can be used in terms of how you're going to be holding this. So as you can see, it has a clipping mechanism here at the end. And this clipping mechanism, as you can see, it clips and you can't pull it open like this unless if you pull this one upwards and the other one is pushed downwards, that's how you can open it. So there are two techniques as to which, how you can actually hold this. So you're going to be using your thumb and you're going to be using your uh, index finger. So that's the one that's going to be gripping like that. Then this will be over this area like that. And this is actually, sorry, um, not your middle finger, but this finger. This is actually now going to be creating now this force that you're going to be moving through like that into the tissues, generating that force that is moving through the tissues like that. There are some people that prefer to hold it by palming it. So they'll palm it like that, and then they'll hold it like that, such that they can go in, especially with the longer ones, it's much 
easier to go in like that with that technique. And then, of course, with your non-dominant hand is the one that you're using, of course, to grip the suture material. Make sure that whenever you're gripping, whenever you push in your, your suture into the wound, make sure that you avoid gripping at the needle. Because once you grip the needle, you may actually blunt the needle. So when you're even you're picking it up with your forceps, pick it up not at the needle here tip, but pick it up here at the body of the suture, of the needle. So, okay, so now let's show you the technique that I keep talking about. So we're getting our suture, and remember it should be facing you like that. And of course your needle holder is going to be going and it's going to clip there. So going to clip there. Make sure that it's actually stable and doesn't actually wiggle around. So as you, as you can see, again, we're holding it like that with the technique. Now, the way in which we're going to be coming in, remember that we want to be entering the wound at one centimeter away or a finger breadth away from the wound margin and another finger breadth away from this other wound margin. So we're going to be entering, we're going to be entering at 90 degrees to the wound. So we're going to be entering at 90 degrees, making a swinging motion. So we're going to enter in that fashion like that. We're going to make a swinging motion and then we're going to come out at the other end like that. If you have your uh, dissecting forceps, you can even grab this here at this particular point and push. And this will now pull, this will now pull this on the opposite side of, this will now pull this on the opposite side of the wound. And you can see that now this suture has penetrated through the wound approximately one finger breadth into the wound and one finger breadth out of the wound like that. And then when you now reach this particular stage, Make sure that this end that is remaining here is not very long. Otherwise, you will keep wasting your suture material. If this end that is here hanging out is quite long, you're going to keep wasting your suture material. So make sure that it's quite short, like let's say that length there. And then you're going to make a knot. So this is how you're going to be making a knot. You're going to be knotting it about two times over this needle holder. So let's say you're going to go one, two, and then you pull this and you hold this needle you hold the end that is sticking out and you pull it over like that to close the wound like that and then you do it again once then again you grip it there and you close like that and then as you now do it much faster or as the more you do it the faster you're going to be become so now when you're cutting it off don't cut them too close to the wound margin because it would be very difficult for you to come and remove the suture. So we can actually pretty much cut it at this particular, leave about one centimeter. We cut it at this particular length, as you can see here. So as we can see here, this wound here has been closed like so. See, it's quite intact. So I shall do another one for you guys so that you can actually appreciate the technique again. So we have our needle there. We have our needle holder, we place our needle holder in that fashion, okay? Once we've placed our needle holder, remember we're coming 90 degrees to the skin and we're making this swinging motion, 90 degrees and making swinging motions to the skin and we push the needle in. Remember, avoid grabbing the needle by the tip, you can grab it by the, by the body like that and you push it in like that. And make sure that the end that is remaining here is going to be quite short and then you make your knot you're going to be making your knot and you tie it off you make another knot like that and you tie it off then the last bit is of course to cut it off so and then you come and you cut it off about one centimeter away from the wound and that's how you actually do so once you learn this basic suturing technique it actually becomes very easy for you guys to do See you in the next video.